the detective approaches the dumpster slowly. He notices a strong odor and an overabundance of flies circling above the hinged lid. An experienced investigator, he already knows what he's about to find. That's the voice of Jennifer Manzella, the host and producer of Countdown to Capture, a true crime podcast about the case of Peter Chadwick. In 2012, police in the affluent city of Newport Beach, California, found bloodstains and broken glass in the home that Chadwick shared with his wife and their two sons. Days later, a hundred miles away, they found her body in a dumpster. Chadwick initially told investigators that his wife had been killed by a Latino handyman who kidnapped him and tried to force him to drive his wife's body to the Mexican border. But police didn't buy it. And an affidavit obtained by the Orange County Register says he later admitted to making up the story. Chadwick was charged with murder. He pleaded not guilty, posted bail, and then disappeared. Police have been looking for him ever since. I'll tell you about the life he led, the lies he told, and how he abandoned his children. I'll tell you why he's most wanted. Countdown to Capture follows the style of other popular true crime podcasts, like Dirty John and Serial. It got over 160,000 listens within a few days of the release of its first episode, and hit number 24 on the overall iTunes charts in the United States. Not quite serial numbers, but pretty good, considering that Countdown to Capture is not produced by an experienced media company. It's made by a police department, the same department that's investigating the case. Manzella works for Newport Beach PD. What was the conversation when you kind of pitched the idea of saying, hey, maybe we could do a podcast about this? Um, I did hear, I don't know what a podcast is, but that sounds exciting. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Um, and I think that it very quickly went from, I'm not sure if that's a good idea to, this is this is a great thing, run with it and go. The case itself is very episodic in nature. So the podcast format seemed to work really well just for me when I was thinking about how I was going to lay it out. In episodes one through five, I told you the story of murderer and fugitive Peter Chadwick. As a journalist, yes. if I'm talking about Peter Chadwick, I have to say Peter Chadwick, who allegedly right. committed right. a murder. And we don't use the word alleged. Right. right. You just, right. you call him a murderer. A murderer and fugitive. Absolutely. So we put out those same kinds of statements all the time. We're just getting those statements to more people because this podcast has become so viral. In a way, she's right. This is what shows like America's Most Wanted used to do. Telling the police side of the case and getting the public interested in catching the suspects. Tonight on America's Most Wanted. But police making their own narrative drama about an open case without a middleman is pretty new. And Priscilla Ocean, who teaches criminal law at Loyola Law School, is concerned about the implications. You listened to the podcast. I did. I listened to about four episodes, yeah. And it's entertaining. Yeah, it is. It's absolutely engaging. That's why it's so terrifying. You know, I think because it's so uh, entertaining, it is more effective then in terms of set, selling a one-sided narrative about the police's certainty that this person who has not been tried, who has not pled guilty, um, is guilty of this crime. Isn't it fairly natural that police would want to make sure that the narrative that is being told about a crime is their narrative? Well, it's not necessarily the case that that's what they should be doing. Mm. Right. Police are there to investigate crimes. It is not their job to come to a legal conclusion about that. Police don't get to be executioners. They don't get to be the judge and the jury. But recently, police have been criticized for trying to sway public opinion before a case can even get to a judge and jury. In the case of Michael Brown, Ferguson PD released video that they said shows him stealing cigarillos, but withheld other footage that might have given a fuller picture. And after Botham Jean was shot in his own home by an off-duty police officer, Dallas police said they found marijuana in his apartment. Ocean is worried about what might happen if podcasts are added to the police's arsenal. When you are dealing with police shootings, the police are not so forthcoming. They are not going to do a podcast, right, indicting their officer. So it's also about selective use of the podcast. So which cases are they going to use the podcast for? Do you think this is a kind of Pandora's box? This is going to happen again? I, I don't know. I mean, look, if they if they get a tip off of this um, that leads to the arrest, the rearrest of uh, Peter Chadwick, 
maybe other law enforcement agencies consider doing it. Have you heard from other police departments? We have. We've actually had a couple um, departments reach out to us and ask for uh, equipment recommendations because they're interested in starting their own podcast series about their um, cold cases. And we've heard from a couple departments who are just reaching out to say that they were intrigued and that they were listening as well. When you do get comments where people are saying, look, innocent until proven guilty, you're trying to manipulate how people feel about this case that's still open. How do you feel when you hear that? We're not trying to convince anybody of Peter Chadwick's guilt. Absolutely not. We are trying to conduct a manhunt. We're trying to get his face out there and we're trying to raise awareness about this case. I'm not sure that everybody walks away convinced of, of our position, but we're absolutely confident that our case will stand up. It's probably why he's not here.